I just wanted to share with you some of the great savor, versatile, versatile mixes here. So just gonna go through the product, give you a little bit of quick tip ideas on what to use it for, some um, features and benefits of the savor range, specifically around the mixes. All right, well, I'm gonna get right into it. So grab a pen and paper, grab some coffee or water, whatever it is, and um, take notes and, I don't have it written down, so this is just from the top of my head, so it um, would be really great if someone could share their notes. All right, so this is a training video, and um, again, it is for the associates, distributors of uh, Longevity, and those of you who are really interested in the Saver range. The first thing that I wanted to share with you and remind you is that Saver has no additives. And what that means is there's no preservatives, it's all natural, nothing added to it. You're only getting the spices and on occasion salt and only two products have a little bit of sugar in it and that's Australian cane sugar. So there's no genetically modified um, ingredients at all. There are no um, fumigants, it's all steam sterilized, which is the requirements in Australia. There's no gluten, it's actually been certified gluten-free, which is really fantastic because in Australia, to be certified gluten-free, it must be zero parts per million. So that's very, very exciting. Now, the other thing we get asked a lot about is uh, are there anti-caking agents in uh, saver products and no there's no anti-caking agents what an anti-caking agent in most um, places is is actually you know the little um, silicate packages you get maybe in camera equipment or um, you know it, it's a little silicate package and it says do not ingest in that now legally in the food industry that um, they're allowed to add I think it's up to three percent of that silicate ground up in the food that you eat so do watch for that um, it's not something that your body really well um, works with well is this anti-caking agent called the silicate the other ways that um, companies may put anti-caking agents in is um, rice flour, and sometimes flour. So none of these are added um, to this to the Savior product range. So you know it is absolutely natural and the way it is. So if something cakes on you, which, um, you know, this the pomodoro basil, um, it has tomato powder or tomato powder in Australia and um, the UK. So tomato powder, I'm gonna say for the US uh, um, market. Um, so sometimes this will get little clumps of, of tomato. It also has little tomato um, chips, maybe you want to call it like that. And so the best way to do it rather than put silica in it is just give it a really good shake. That'll loosen it all up again, or simply open it up, take a fork and put it in there and mash it all up again. It's not going to hurt the integrity, to integrity of the product. It's still going to taste great. It's just not going to have the additives. All right, cool. So let's go through the product range. Why don't I start with Pomodoro basil? So this is a typical, again, what we love about the Saver range is that it um, says a blend inspired by. So this is a blend inspired by Italy and it is a typical Italian robust blend. Um, it's really great for any pasta dishes. I love to take halloumi cheese and um, just put it on top and then grill it. I've got some photos of doing that. Um, great or pan fry, however you like to do that. Fantastic. Now, where else would I use this? Um, pasta salad, potato salad, um, oven fries, any potato dishes are great. These all work really well with that. Um, of course, you can make it as a dip, just using um, sour cream and a little bit of mayonnaise or just sour cream, or you can use the vegan options or the dairy-free options. Um, really great in yogurt as well. So use the kind of the, I like the full fat, um, Greek style yogurt, that's really good. Um, so there's lots of options there, dairy and non-dairy. Now, um, what else do you, oh, chicken, fantastic on chicken. So um, you can just use it as a, a bit of a dry rub. You can do a marinade with it. Um, if you like to dip um, bread into olive oil and vinegar, this is great to put in there as well. Um, so it really is a versatile blend, really leaning towards the, um, the pasta, um, the Italian, great on in your pasta or your tomato sauce for your pizza. Um, where else did I put that? Um, uh, who, um, if you want to do 
uh, like I said, on chicken. Oh, they're really good on fish too, if you want a tomato-based um, sauce for fish. All right, so pomodoro basil, and I'm sure that if you wanna comment your favorites in the comment section when I post the video, fantastic. Would love to have everyone's um, as well. Well, we're keeping on with the Italian theme here. We have the Italian Pinsimonio um, olive oil. Now, this isn't olive oil. A lot of people get confused. It's actually a, an, an, an olive oil style dip. Now, with this one, because of the um, great herbaceous nature of this one, um, let me just tell you a little bit about it. It is, um, I'll read the ingredients so I get it right. Thyme, rosemary, oregano or oregano, Australian sea salt, black pepper, um, lemon myrtle, which is an Australian native um, plant. It's got a really beautiful lemony um, flavor, as it says. A little bit of cayenne pepper to give it that zing. Um, and cayenne really actually sometimes pulls um, uh, ingredients together. So it really kind of is a catalyst for pulling them together. Um, so this one, um, really great. If you are that um, olive oil um, bread dipper, this is great. Now always make sure if you're using olive oil, make sure it's the freshest um, olive oil available. Um, now this one I love on chicken. So um, take a little bit of lemon, um, put it on the chicken, put this in there uh, on top um, and roast the chicken that way. Great on roast potatoes as well. This one is fantastic on lamb that way. So lamb, chicken, um, just really, really beautiful. Uh, again, any type of potato dish, so a potato salad, but make sure with this one, because it's really herby, you want to let it sit long enough that it, you're not just eating herby stems. You really want to um, get that in um, um, softening up as well. Um, so um, soups as well, if you're doing the um, Italian soup, um, this is great in there as well. So again, comment in the, um, in the, comments and let's share everyone's ideas on how to use it um, there. So I'm gonna move on to Turkish mix. Now I did a, a great Middle Eastern dip the easy way, just yogurt, um, Greek style yogurt with this one. Also fantastic in hummus. Now this one is great in soup. So think of vegetable type soup because it's got, um, let me go through the ingredients so you'll understand what I'm saying. Um, carrot is the first ingredient garlic, sumac. Sumac is a Middle Eastern berry. It's kind of lemony. It's um, a, a deep red color. Good sumac is a deep red color. And so it's a it, it's a lemony flavor, kind of um, savory notes to it as well. Um, parsley, cumin, sweet paprika, red bell peppers, cassia, which is um, cinnamon, the proper name for, um, there's two types of cinnamon, so it's a proper name for um, the more lighter cinnamon, um, it's not, actually technically not cinnamon, cinnamon is cassia, um, and that one is used more for baking in that, so it's really a bright um, note there. Caraway seeds, which would give that um, pungent, um, robust flavor there, black peppers, and um, so this really has, lends itself to Middle Eastern. Now, if you're doing um, Middle Eastern style pickles, this is fantastic there. If you're doing um, kofta, you wanna mix this in your mince um, or your ground beef or um, ground lamb, fantastic. Um, again, uh, it really lends itself to an interesting potato salad. Uh, would be great with um, mashed potatoes or potato wedges. Soups, again, um, I love this one in a, a chicken soup. It really gives it a really interesting flavor, but the carrots just kind of sweeten it up. Um, if you're doing pumpkin soup or squash, um, it's really great on that as well. And carrot soup, this is fantastic in, in a carrot soup. Okay. So creamy dill, now there's no cream in this, it's just that's the um, essence of how to use it, is very popular Scandinavian um, uh, fish, you know, Scandinavian sauces is typically where this comes from. So, um, so this is a, a blend inspired by Scandinavia. Let's go through the ingredients. Onion, parsley, celery seed, dill tips, okay? Not dill seed, dill tips. Um, two totally different flavors here. Uh, garlic and sumac, again, giving that, that light lemony flavor, um, which is really interesting in this combination, and cilantro. Now the sumac in this one really allows it to go um, move not just from Scandinavia, but it can go into the Middle Eastern Turkey. Um, also, if you want um, 
So a lot of uh, Mediterranean, um, even India, has uh, yogurt dips. So this really works well with the sumac to be able to um, give it that um, more a kind of exotic flavor. So it works really well as a um, just a straight um, creamy garlic, a uh, creamy um, um, yogurt dip. Uh, where I also love this one is something like as simple as taking your salmon and um, mixing this in with a little bit of mayonnaise and you can use the um, um, avocado mayonnaise, it works well with that too. Just mix this in, let it sit for a little bit and then brush the salmon filet and what that does is it, before you bake it, and what that does is it locks that salmon juice in there because salmon, if you overdo it slightly, it's gonna go really dry. So this keeps that really juicy um, as well. So this one lends itself to any vegetables basically. Um, root vegetables, you can use it um, uh, before you um, grill them, before you bake them, you can use them in mashed potatoes. You can, after you've mashed the vegetables, you can put it in there. You know, one of the things that I love is um, just a quick and easy, oh my gosh, you know, I've got to add something for dinner um, uh, and a side dish. Just take a bag of frozen baby peas, thaw them out, drain the water out, mix this in with a little bit of mayonnaise again, toss it all together, let it sit for a five minutes in the fridge and you've got a cool uh, pea salad as well. So really easy to do um, things with this. Now dill works well for um, um, hash browns, uh, potato cakes, for uh, fish cakes as well. So really, um, you know, just sprinkle it on if you're doing poached um, fish. This is beautiful and poached fish as well. So lots of really simple ideas for the creamy dill. It's one of the most versatile um, uh, um, mixes here. Guacamole, I said over and over again, this is the one I use the most. It Every time I do eggs or um, chicken, if I can't um, think about what I want to add to ever, anything, it's just, I reach for this one. It's just really simple. So onion, garlic, parsley, cumin, red bell pepper, cilantro, uh, black pepper, chili, Australian sea salt. Um, again, so this is really authentic. You can just make it in sour cream and it tastes like you're almost having guacamole. Or of course, if you want the, um, if you've got a, um, a ripe avocado you want to use, this is beautiful in, in um, uh, making guacamole. So it's basically for all of the mixes, it's one tablespoon of the mix per one cup of your base. So um, I use not quite a tablespoon when I'm doing an avocado because most avocados aren't, aren't quite a, a, a cup. So. Um, not quite a tablespoon of this. If you want to make it um, a, a little bit creamier, you can certainly add sour cream to your avocado as well. Um, and again, scrambled eggs, omelets, anything with cheese, um, eggs, um, potatoes, fantastic. I use it as a rub um, uh, as well on chicken, on fish, it's gorgeous. You know, making fish tacos, this is fantastic. Um, so use it for not just uh, a guacamole, use it for everyday cooking. Okay, California onion. Again, um, one of the most easy um, and probably the most commonly used products as well is the California onion. Now, I don't like to cut onions up. I don't like the tears and to be truthful, I don't really like cutting up vegetables, so I love these um, as well. So let's say, let's look at what the ingredients are. Very simply, it's onion, parsley, oregano or oregano, chives, very simple ingredients. So you can see where anywhere you're gonna put an onion is fantastic. Um, now, I also uh, love it in mashed potatoes, twice baked potatoes. Um, uh, where else? Um, anytime, like I said, soups or stews, if I'm doing a crock pot, this goes in. Um, you know, unless you really want that onion crunch, um, like in a stir fry, everything else, any pasta dishes, any, 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 anything like that, that this one goes in there for sure. Um, meatballs, um, it's, it's just so versatile. All right, you'll wonder where, what you did without that one. Okay, Japanese curry. This blend is amazing. They're all amazing, but this one, the depth of flavor in here is incredible. So it has garlic, under, onion, coriander, cumin, ginger, just gives that pop, um, turmeric, 
bay leaf tomato. So it's beautiful tomato powder in there combining with the curry is just amazing. Cardamom gives that, that lovely top note. One of the first things that um, you, you sense is this brightness of it. Fennel, a um, little hint of that licorice flavor in the fennel. Clove, um, again, clove is one of those ones that just kind of stimulates or catalyzes the other flavors. It's fantastic. Um, so it's a really great um, depth of flavor curry. Now, a Japanese curry is typically um, done with potatoes, so root vegetables. Um, you can add protein to it as well. And it um, it's not a runny curry. It's, it's actually really, you, you want to um, simmer it down, boil it, well, not boil it, but simmer it down um, to be not quite a dry curry like a rendang, but um, certainly much drier than, um, you know, the typical Indian style curries. Um, so again, beautiful. I use this for, you know, it would be great if we're interesting laksa, it would be also great um, as a regular curry. You could put it in dal. It really depends on do you want it more of an Indian flavor? Do you want it something a little bit different and interesting with the tomato in there as well? Okay, now again, not just a curry. So a lot of people in Australia love um, curried eggs, gorgeous. Um, curried sausages, gorgeous, all right? So um, again, a potato bake or scalp potatoes, as we'd say in North America, really interesting. Um, you can use it in eggs as well. So a quiche, you might have a really interesting quiche. Um, this would work as well in there. So uh, think outside the box on it and um, great. Now I've even been known to in a real hurry, well, not in a hurry, but maybe I don't have a lot of, um, you know, maybe at uh, an apartment somewhere in the world and I don't have a lot of opportunities uh, with different cooking, you can use it as a rub on chicken and meat as well. So it, it doesn't sit in just the curry um, area where you can only make a curry with it. Um, really, really great. So if you want to do an authentic style of Japanese curry, then all you do is just Google a recipe for Japanese curry and eliminate all of the spices. Okay, this is everything that you need there. Okay. Thai mix, same thing. Now this is a Thai style curry. Um, you can have it as a red curry, you can have it as a green curry. Um, now the easiest way for me, again, <laughs> just one easy, I don't want difficult. So I just open a can of coconut milk or coconut cream, add um, a tablespoon of this per can, and then I will simmer that in a pot. I will put in whatever protein, whether it's prawns, whether or shrimp, whether it's fish, whether it's um, chicken. Those are the typical ones I use with the Thai. Um, you can use beef as well. Um, it, it works well. And um, then add whatever vegetables you want. And at the very end, if you're going to add, um, you know, if you're going to add anything li light vegetables, that's where you want to add it at the end, like your snap peas, your sugar peas, your. Um, um, even if you were to do put sprouts in it, like if you're doing a laksa or something like that, you would you would add those at the end. Now, just as I said before, um, this one is great in um, um, any potatoes, any egg dishes is fantastic. Um, soups again. This one's got a little bit of a kick to it. So it's not. I wouldn't class it as total as hot. You know, most people will be able to handle this, especially when you're using uh, cream base. So anytime there's heat. When you use cream base, it's going to tone it down. Now, remember about anything with heat, though. Tomorrow is going to be hotter, all right? So anytime you let any um, food sit uh, overnight with, that has any type of chilies, chili flakes in it, anything warm, um, it is going to definitely get uh, more uh, hotter the next day. I'll go through the ingredients, and I haven't mentioned that yet. So the ingredients in here are basil, onion, red bell peppers, chili, coriander, uh, turmeric, cumin, kaffir lime, love kaffir lime, cilantro, lemongrass, love that too, chives, mustard, so that's ground mustard, and ginger. So you can see there's a little bit um, of things like the chili, and chili's early on in this one, so um, it would be um, a little bit more, but the, the kaffir lime, the lemongrass, the cilantro, the mustard, the ginger, 
Um, those are, um, again, more top note, well not mustard, but more top note ingredients. So they're going to give you um, this brightness and that is really what this combination um, uh, of ingredients does. The coriander, when we say coriander, it's actually um, ground or whole coriander. It really depends on the, the, the seed. Uh, when we're talking about um, cilantro, we're talking about coriander leaf. Okay, um, so I know multi, many countries call cilantro coriander, um, and it really means coriander leaf. And then coriander is what we know as the um, the um, seed there. Okay, so let's go on to spicy Cajun. I'll read the ingredients for this one for you: onion, sweet paprika, chili, garlic, parsley, cumin, cilantro, cayenne, and black pepper. So this one screams heat. Okay. So it is warm. If you've ever been to Louisiana and you've had um, some good um, blackened fish, blackened chicken, um, blackened gator, <laughs> we have that down there too. Um, this is the one that, that you would use for that. Now, I, again, love it in scrambled eggs. Any morning that I want to kick, a little bit more kick than the guacamole, this one gets added to it. Fantastic for prawns or shrimp. Um, really great, again, for any seafood. This one just goes so well with seafood. Um, and um, I, I tend for me to stick more to seafood and chicken uh, with this one, but certainly there'd be no reason if you like um, uh, steak, great on beef as well. Um, Again, um, it is a great one to add. So you may be doing a um, pasta dish and you want to add a little kick to it. This one's great to add a kick to it. Um, same with your marinades. You add a kick to it. It may not be the whole marinade. It might not be the only spice blend that you use in the marinade, but great for a kick. Um, potato wedges, oh my goodness. Um, hash browns, really great. Um, so again, and for any one of these, you know, a salad dressing, um, can, you can really quickly do a salad dressing buttermilk, those of you who use olive oil, olive oil and um, your balsamic vinegar, um, any one of these will, will do a great salad dressing as well for you. Okay. Um, curry house mix. We call this the family friendly curry. Um, it is not hot at all. It's just got really um, big flavors there. Um, but really, again, um, an authentic style curry that is just doesn't have the heat. So those of you who like the heat, just add chili flakes, all right? So um, red pepper flakes, I think that's what they hold in the States as well. Okay, so onion, garlic, parsley, celery seed, um, coriander, turmeric, cumin, chives, mustard, cassia, chili, fenugreek, oh, love fenugreek, salt, cardamom and clove. So you can see there's a lot of um, ingredients in this one, which gives it that really great depth of flavor. Uh, this is the one for, you know, like I said, family friendly curry, really authentic, has a, you know, with the fenugreek and the cassia um, and cardamom and cloves in there. That just really pulls it together as a, a very um, authentic um, Indian style curry. So you can do, um, you know, um, a curry dish. So if you want to do a madras curry with this, add a little bit of tomato to it. That's fantastic. Um, potato bake, as I said, scalp potatoes, um, quiches, omelets, um, um, curried eggs, curried sausages, really a very, very, very versatile curry. Where some of the other curry blends, you're kind of moving to more specific. This one is the most versatile curry blend that we have in um, Sabre. Okay. And I know that I'm missing at least one mix that I can think of off the top of my head. I'll do that one at the end. Um, spiced beet hummus. Now, this isn't just for hummus, but oh my goodness, it is crazy good in hummus. I just can't get enough of it. You know, I'm gonna open the jar because this is just um, divine, absolutely divine. So it is made from beets, ground up beets. So let's go through the ingredients. Onion, beet powder, garlic, parsley, sumac, there we are, that Middle Eastern um, um, lemony type berry, sweet paprika, coriander, cumin, cassia, chives, black pepper, white pepper. So um, again, really depth of flavor there. It is a Middle Eastern style. Um, it's um, inspired by Turkey. It is a Middle Eastern style um, um, flavor profile. Um, but it's so versatile. And you know, um, 
and when you make it as a dip in yogurt or um, sour cream, the coloring, the, the crimson color that comes through there is just gorgeous. You know, in a dip, it, it's like a pinky color. So um, kids love it, you know, boys and girls. They just love that it's a pink dip and it's surprising. They think it's gonna be more fruity and sweet and they taste it and they love it. So it's a great way to get kids to obviously eat more veggies. We never get enough veggies, um, but also to explore more flavors. Um, you know, oftentimes that kids, you know how they are, they don't wanna explore a lot of flavors and this kind of gets them more used to some of those interesting flavor, flavors as well. So hummus and dips are great. I love to put this one in meatballs, gives it a really sweet, um, um, lovely, rich flavor. Um, so whether it is um, your beef or um, lamb, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous in there. Um, now, potatoes, anything like that, it's gonna give it a really interesting pink um, color, which is fantastic. You could do a, a potato cake with this one, beautiful as well. I've used it on um, potato wedges. Uh, what else? Um, anytime I'm doing crock pot, um, I love to put this in there. It just, even in a tomato dish, it just really gives this amazing, amazing flavor. So I, I really hope that you have a chance to um, play with this one. I think for a lot of people, they're just unsure of it um, initially, but those people who um, have tried it, can't get enough of it. It will be the one product that you will reorder over and over and over again once you start playing with that one. So the other one that I'm missing here that I can think of off the top of my head is the garlic mix. Now that one um, is a real lovely herbal um, garlic blend. Uh, you would use it for things like just putting in butter on garlic toast, you know, usually gl gluten-free um, uh, bread there. It's also great um, as a throw in in anything. So whether you use it on its own, but it really works well with in almost any one of these. So if you want a little bit more garlic, a little bit more herbs, you could take the spicy Cajun and add it to that. You could take the California, add it to that. Um, there. You can add it to the Turkish mix. So you can add it to um, any one of the Italian um, blends as well. So um, really works well um, as an additional uh, anywhere where your recipe would um, ask for a Mediterranean style herb or garlic works beautiful together. The only place I wouldn't use it is like an Asian style stir fry or something like that. Okay, the other one I'm missing is the Calabrese pesto. Now this is a typical pesto blend. It's got onion and garlic and basil in there. Those are the main um, main ingredients. And of course you can make a pesto with it. You can um, um, use it um, on like make focaccia uh, bread um, in any of your tomato based or cream based um, sauces as well. It's got red peppers in it. So it, it um, brings a sweetness to it. Um, and uh, great with cream cheese. All of these blend really well with cream cheese. So instead of buying the flavored cream cheese, just buy your regular cream cheese. Um, cut the block. If you got the block, cut your block into threes or uh, three or four, and then you can roll the cream cheese in in there and um, make kind of like a quick and easy cheese ball, or you can blend it in if you like it that way. Um, and I, you know, I would say make three or four choices instead of just doing one, or just cut it off bit by bit, um, your, your cream cheese um, block, and use it as needed, because then you have the rest of the cream cheese to use in any other baking or um, um, sauces or anything else that you might use for that. Um, so it's really, again, really versatile. I do use that one in potato salad too. In pasta salad, it's amazing. Um, it works well with egg dishes uh, as well and uh, fantastic on chicken. So whether you're doing it as a marinade or if you're just putting it on um, the chicken, it, it, either way, it's fantastic. Um, also, if you're doing um, like a, a white fish, so really good on, on fish too with those uh, Italian flavors. So hopefully this is giving you some insight into some of the most popular and most versatile mixes in the Saver range. And I will uh, go through the rest of the range um, in um, each grouping uh, over the next couple of days so you'll be able to have these videos to share with your team for training. Thanks and we'll talk to you soon.